Blues, jazz, and hip-hop are three of America's original musical art forms and share a birth distinctly rooted in the ugly dichotomies of race, class, politics, and culture, which would explain the storied connection between them. Our guest is here to propel this creative evolution into the future and further congeal this symbiotic relationship. This all-embracing set of musical influences is keeping Grammy-winning trumpeter Maurice Mo Better Brown busy recording, performing, and producing remarkable music. He's here today to give us all 360 degrees of his musical life force. I'm your host, Melanie Charles. Keep it right here to hear his latest display of unbound tonal expression right here on B-Side. <laughs>
What's up? That was the mood. That's that's the title track of the next record, right? Yeah, the intro song. But we'll get to that later. Before we we dive right in, who's performing with you today? We got uh, James Francis on keys. All right, all right. I'm playing Cats on bass. Ooh. Jeremy Bean Clemens on drums. And Chelsea Barrett, some vocals in tennis hat. Yeah. So, so Mo, um, do you come from a musical family? Are your, are your parents musicians? How did this begin? Well, my mom sings in choir okay. growing up, and my, my grandfather's a pastor, so she grew up in church. Mm. And my dad, that, he said he played bass. I never heard him play bass. But <laughs> <laughs> he's always told me stories of, I used to play bass. But, but I, the real musical uh, inspiration for me was my uncle, who's uh, Bobby Slim James. He's pretty well known, blues guitarist and vocalist mm. in Chicago, and he had a few hits abroad. And I actually, guitar was my first instrument. He bought oh. that for me, and I learned it and destroyed it watching a rock video, trying to <laughs> be like them. And that oh. was the end of my guitar days. Uh oh. So. <laughs> okay. Um. So. I heard that in the eighth grade, Winton singled you out, right? What, yeah. what did he say to you? What was that about? Oh, well, I went to see a workshop where he was at, and um, I was just so inspired by checking him out. I was so young, and I just remember having my horn on my leg and bouncing, just watching him. And he was doing the workshop, and he saw me. He was like, this guy has this horn. Anybody else got their horn? Everybody had their horn. He's like, that only means one thing. We got to have a jam session. So yeah. then we started playing some blues, and we all came up and played. You all play like one chorus or whatever, and then you keep it moving. And there was a lot of cats that were like a lot better than me because I was younger. But I guess he saw something in me then because mm. I, I played my chorus, and he was like, no, keep playing. You know? And then he mm. kept me up there with him and um, took a liking to me and gave me a lot of guidance throughout the years uh, and you know, helped me. At one point, he even helped me get a horn when I, when I couldn't get a horn when I was younger. So, definitely, Win has uh, been a, a great mentor to me. And what other ways would you say that he's given you guidance? Would you cite him as sort of an influence? Who who would you say are some of your trumpet influences? Well, um, I like you know, Win is a great trumpet player. He's definitely an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. I think when I think about my particular style and approach to playing the instrument. Uh, Miles is a, is a big influence to me. Uh, Freddie Hubbard, uh, Clifford Brown, mm. I really like those guys. And Benny Bailey, a lot of people forget about him. You know, Charles mm. Tolliver is great too. So, uh, but those guys are are the guys that really influence me a lot. And a lot of sax players. You know, believe it or not, I listen to a lot of sax and piano, and um, try to get my dexterity mm. up to where a sax player can play or a piano player because they play so fast. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, I was teasing Chelsea. I was like, you're like Coltrane because like, she plays with you a lot. So yeah. it's cool that you cite Miles. Yeah. Um, so you went to Northern Illinois University. Yeah. What was that like? That was great. Um, that was a, a 
crazy time for me. I was working with Ron Carter at the school, and he was, I was in his big band, and he was, he gave me a full ride to Northern. So I was all about that, but at the same time, I was just becoming a, a real professional musician. So I was going on the road, Oscar Peterson and Clark Terry, and, wow. you know, like <laughs> Benny Golson, and, you know. So it was like I was getting pulled, pulled away from school thing with the gig thing, but mm -hmm. I was really getting school and school with them too, so I had to kind of balance it out. So. Yeah. But uh, it all worked out for me. When Was that before or after NOLA? That's before NOLA. Okay. So Chicago was you know Northern Illinois University and Columbia College, and then um, I wound up going to Baton Rouge to go study with the great Alvin Baptiste. Ooh. So that completely changed my life. <laughs> Let's go deeper into that because I recently ran into you in NOLA uh -huh. and um, that was like my second time. I didn't really, I haven't really seen the scene and I noticed that it's a trumpet heavy place. There's oh, a yeah. lot of horn players and they're all showmans. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's something that we love about you. Obviously you got chops and you can play, you got language. Yes, yes. But there's also an added element of, of how to deliver the music that you really do special would you say that that is because of your nola time well i guess it definitely had an influence on on that but i think from day one i've always felt music so i'm kind of like that person who does who plays like no one's in the room it could be two people or twenty thousand people and it's no effect to me mm -hmm. as far as like the energy of me getting nervous or anything like that because it's kind of just do my thing, you know, and I try to have a good time. I think that's the most important thing. If you're having a good time, it's infectious, and yeah. the crowd has a good time. Everyone's having a good time. There's good energy. There's love in the room, and that's what we go for. That's the vibe. Yeah, that's true, and I, I know you have some lifelong fans that are here today that I know they can agree with what you're saying. I know they connect with you on a deep level. Um, so the first song was The Mood. You're about to do On My Way Home and Intimate Transition. Can you tell us a little bit about those two songs before you do them? Yeah. Well, The Mood is the title track of the new album. Mm -hmm. The album is called The Mood. Mm -hmm. And uh, Intimate Transitions is a special song for me because it's just basically a very sexy song. You know? okay. <laughs> and that's uh, what I was going for. I remember when I, when, when I was writing this song, I was like, oh, I was getting goosebumps. And I was thinking, like, oh, man, like, how many babies are going to be made from this record? Yes. <laughs> yes. And it, in the whole album, I'm playing, I feel like I'm naked on the, on the whole album because I'm really uh, approaching it in a way where it's just very honest. Okay. And so, you know, I know a lot of people are want, want to do hip hop jazz and stuff like that right now. It's real in or whatever, but it's been what I've been doing since day one, since For Hip sure. to Bop. You know, For this is my sure. first album. So it's kind of a, a very organic. Uh, process of coming together. I think it has a lot to do with the hip hop production I do too mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So that We're going to get into that. that. Um, but real quick, tell us a little bit about uh, On My Way Home. On My Way Home is just uh, basically that feeling you get when basically you're on the road mm -hmm. and you're almost done with your job. Or you don't even have to be on the road. You could be at, at your nine to five, you know, and it's about to get five o'clock and you're just excited because you, you paid your dues, basically. You know, you, mm -hmm. you went through a, your whole mm -hmm. life and you're working, 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 working. And then when it's time to clock out, that's your time. You know what I mean? So that's what On My Way Home is all about. All right. Well, let's hear it. All right. Thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah, though. No. I'm really loving this new stuff. Really dope vibes. Thanks. Um, so you got bars. You don't only really play trumpet, you only produce, you got bars. When did you start rapping? How did that start? Um, I started rapping when I was little in Chicago. We yeah. were Cyphers, getting bullied with the big kids and yeah. <coughs> trying to get in and spit a little something and yeah. it's just uh, I've always felt like I can express myself better with with uh, with my horn or either with like words mm -hmm. as far as like poetry. That's mm -hmm. how I look at hip hop, it's a lot a lot of poetry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um when you sit and write, you always can find yourself better. You know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of my personal growth as a person, let alone, you know, and as a musician, but especially as a person, has, has came from my writing and spending time with myself and just trying to um, see the world from a different perspective, from an honest perspective that I see and just try to make it something that's, uh, I don't know, kind of tangible. <laughs> when you have, yeah. you have, uh, when you have the music, the finished product, you know? Definitely, I feel that because y there's a marriage between jazz and hip hop for you. Yeah. What The love of hip hop or the love of jazz, which one came first? How did, how did that happen? Uh, it's weird, it's, it was both for me, really. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I mean, soul music was number one. That's why I grew up listening to soul music, you know, and blues. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to that in the household on record players. <laughs> and jazz so mm -hmm. that there wasn't a lot of hip-hop going on at home but okay. in, in in my world you know my growing up it was very like a part of the culture you yeah. know of who who i was what i connected with yeah. what, uh, what spoke to me yeah so so we fast forward to later on you're doing collaborations with Jean gray yeah. talib bob yeah. how has it been working with with these people it's been it's been amazing you know um, it's it's one thing to uh, be able to work with some of the people that you admire you know mm -hmm. like i feel the same way in the jazz world it's kind of like mm -hmm. i was to records and next thing i know i'm like on the gig with someone and i'm just like yo is this really happening like, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it's surreal, you know, and to be able to work with, uh, you know, people like Talib Kweli and Prodigy, mm -hmm. you know, Mo, uh, Prodigy from Mob Deep, it's amazing, and you know, Omar, soul singer, and mm -hmm. UK, all these new projects I'm working on and producing, mm -hmm. and super excited to uh, get all this new music out there, you know. Yeah, putting some hornification on there. I love oh, that yeah. term that you coined, hornification. Oh yeah, well that's <laughs> we have a, a after the move. There's another album entitled Hornification. Finally! Yeah, so uh, we, what, we, what we're saying, we're telling everybody, like, yeah, it's hornification. They said, what does that mean? I said, oh, we're fornicating with our horns. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely <laughs> a lot of fornication. Yeah, so we're, we're basically, everything's very horn heavy in that, and it's party. It's the, you know, you can hear, really hear the New Orleans uh, hmm. funk influence as, as well as the hip hop and everything. Mm. And um, so we talked about Jean Grey's the Hip Hop Cats, but you've also worked with Aretha, the oh, legend, yeah. yes. Roy. Um, <laughs> how, is, how was that? How was that experience? Oh man, Aretha, she's great. It was, uh, I mean, I just feel really blessed. Like, the one thing about me is that I, I'm pretty well known on, on the jazz scene, and now I'm pretty well known on the hip hop scene for doing this production. And, mm -hmm pretty well known on the jam band scene, mm -hmm. the blues scene with Tedeschi Trucks, the work I did with them yeah. for the last five years. Yeah. So it's like now being able to do a project where I can bring all my worlds together kind of was the logical evolution, the next step for, for where we're going, you know? Yeah, and you brushed a little bit on the Tedeschi Trucks, but you won a Grammy with them for arranging the the horn stuff yeah talk about that like congratulations well, thank, you, thank you thank you thank <laughs> you yeah it's uh it was it's been a trip you know like i said i've been with them for five years i just stopped like six months ago their new album is out i did the horn arrangement on that too so mm. um yeah i mean it's doing really well and I'm, it's still like lots of love with me and then i just saw them at new orleans jazz fest and hung mm. out everybody cool. uh, i think they understood that i need to go um, it's time yeah because yeah. When you have it inside, you got to get it out, you know? Yeah, and you definitely have it inside you. Um, pause. Um, <laughs> but, Mo, 
Um, I know from being on the road with you that you don't sleep. Right. You know, you're on stage, and then you go to, to your room, and you're producing something. You're working on some yeah. arrangement. And then you're on the phone working out something, listen to a mix. Blah, blah. How do you find the energy to, to do it? And trumpet is not easy. Like, you got to shed every day or else you're going to sound crazy yeah, if you don't true. shed. <laughs> uh, how do you balance all of that? One week off on a horn is like, one day is like a week off. So <laughs> you take a week off, it's like a whole month off. So it's very unforgiving, the trumpet. Mm -hmm. um, I, just, I just try to keep a, a routine, you know. Like, uh, I think one of the most important things is try to stay as healthy as possible, you know. When I'm on the road, I'm working out a lot. And you know, running like three miles a day, and you know, just trying to eat eat well and take care of myself. I feel like that's half the battle. If you can do that, and then you'll have a lot more energy. Once when everyone else starts to burn out, you can get that little extra push. Mm -hmm. But you definitely need to sleep. You know, I do need to sleep more. That's the one thing. I'm making sure I get at least six hours at the minimum. But I should get six to eight. You know, but. Sometimes I'm just really busy. Yeah. <laughs> like just now, just coming back from New Orleans Jazz Fest, I was there for two weeks, mm -hmm. and I literally wasn't going to bed till like six in the morning or something. I bet. And the last day before I came here was all night. I went straight to the to the plane, you know, like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So, um, would you say that dancing, some dance hall helps? Talk about Moroccan dance hall. <laughs> oh yeah, Moroccan dance hall. Yeah, that's the the next joint we're gonna play for y'all. It's a funny story with that. I was actually in Morocco. <laughs> and, and I was playing this melody, and everyone was loving it. <laughs> so that's what I thought. Okay, it's called Moroccan dance hall. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was very, it was very strange. Like, a, it was like a, a club, and it was a real classy kind of club. And they just turned the band, the stage over to to the the band that was in town. I forget what. I think I was with Marcus Miller or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we were like, <laughs> and the cast was like, let's play. I was like, oh, let's play. What are we going to play? Let's make something up. I don't know. And then I started doing it. Everyone started dancing. I was like, oh, this is a hit. I got to remember this one. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let, let's hear it. All right, Barack and Dance Hall. Here we go.
I'm grooving up in here. Bean symbols flying everywhere and stuff. <laughs> Um, so I think what's really interesting about you, Mo, is that you've always had the respect of the elders, which is very important, you know? You worked with Dr. Lonnie Smith. When I first heard you, it was because my mom was like, let's go hear the trumpet player at Solomon's <laughs> Porch, mm -hmm. you know? So the elders always love what you do, and I think it's because you always balance the old tradition, the, the real stuff with what's new. And I want to talk about a little bit about your albums, because the, the, one, the one that I really love, Maurice versus Mo Betta, <laughs> right? Yeah. It was the balance between the jazz and the hip hop, right? Yep. T can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, the, the last project I put out was entitled Maurice versus Mo Betta. It was the, the jazz versus the hip hop, right? Maurice versus Mo Betta, like you just said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was really cool about that, my critically acclaimed album, The Cycle of Love, uh, it did really well. And basically, Maurice versus Mo Better was a remix project, but it was more than that because we <laughs> reimagined the album. We just took the the files from the set, the jazz record. Hip hop's been sampling jazz for forever, so I figured, why don't sample myself? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so That's cool. <laughs> so I, basically, I got all the stamps and I got with all my favorite producers that I work with, like DJ Scratch, you know, and all these great people, Sam Barsh, and we got together and made magic you know like they put it together and i had these tracks that we put together and i wrote songs to them and got with all the rappers and the singers and got them to sing it and you know to rap and next thing i know i had this like huge project that was like <laughs> i was like wow this is this is amazing you know like so what are we going to hear on the mood what's different what's the same what well, has the, evolved? The, what's different with the mood first of all it's uh there's no programming on the mood which means it's all what you see like on stage right now. It's mm -hmm. all live, like completely live, mm -hmm. and us playing and takes. Not a lot of overdubbing and stuff. Like I wish we would have cut it to tape actually, because if I'd have known it would have been that smooth, <laughs> we could have just cut it straight to tape. You know, it was mm -hmm. like uh, there was no no real overdubbing. We just oh we like this take better than that take and pieced it together. You know. Um, wrote the songs and got the vision very clearly to the cross very clearly to the musicians where I felt like everyone's on the same page you know you can hear it in the records and I don't know I was just super excited about it <laughs> when can we hear it like, come on. <laughs> I'm getting it mastered tomorrow it's funny you saying that so it, it'll be out really soon okay yeah. all right we gotta wait, y'all. Where, where will we be able to hear it? Where will we be able to get it when it's finally out? Uh, everywhere that you can get music, of basically. Course. <laughs> That's how you do. That's how you do. Yeah. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about stand up? Yeah, What's stand up. Uh, as a song I wrote, to it's a more poli politically conscious song, I guess. It's basically. I feel like a lot of times we see things and we don't say anything because it doesn't have anything to do with us and just kind of stuck on minding just our business and going through life and tunnel vision mm -hmm. you know and basically this song is basically to wake everybody up it's like you know the lyrics are understand something need to stand for something take a stand for something lend a hand for something take my hand for something understand is nothing gotta stand for something while we fall for nothing time to stop the fronting yeah, we stand for something. Never fall for nothing. That's all we want, you know? So mm -hmm. that's what it is. I think we're ready to hear that. <clears throat> Stop rock and roll, everybody lose control. Everything I did, I did it since I was four years old. The air land in the sea, they get into your soul. And I'm like a space rocket just waiting to explode. Thank you. 
stand for something. Take a stand for something. Lend a hand for something. Take my hand for something. Understand it's nothing. Gotta stand for something. I will fall for nothing. Time to stop the front. Yeah, we stand for something. Never fall for nothing. That's all we want. Stop rock and roll. Everybody lose control. Everything I did, I did it since I'm four years old. The air land in the sea, they get into your soul. And I'm like a space rocket just waiting to explode. Homeless beings on this planet begging me getting cash. Now I'm seeing what they see and they know it never lasts. Getting high through supply, they say they getting low. You ain't hearing what they're saying, send them to the stove. My brothers be friendly, them cops, they ain't standing them. Black folks prep for the police, but now they scared to come. Choke my man's dead in the street, face on the pavement. Killing the shit and they get away with it. Right now I feel they only see me one way. And I know you count your sins, feeling some type of way. But you cuss the shit on me and think you hope that I stay. But I wonder what they say when I come back to play. Be like, understand something. Need to stand for something. Take a stand for something. Let the hand for something. Take my hand for something. Understand it's nothing. Gotta stand for something. I'm a fall for nothing. Time to stop the front. Never stand for something, never fall for nothing, that's all we want. easy to see a good thing end but unfortunately time has run out on this exuberant experience thank you Maurice Mo Better Brown for taking us deep into your musical realm make sure you get the mood and keep up with Maurice on Twitter at at Mo Better Brown I'm Melanie Charles and I hope you found this time with us gratifying be sure to check in or stop by our Brick House studio every Thursday to hear more of the best music Brooklyn has to offer. You can also check out this and past episodes anytime at youtube.com slash brick TV. All right, Mo, take us out with one last tune right after this.
More time. Can you do a little improv? Just a little something, something. A little, little something, something. Yeah, y'all want, y'all want to hear song? one more? Yeah.
Until next time, peace and blessings. Yours truly, Maurice Mo Better Brown. Thank y'all so much.